Hello, and welcome back to Diecast Graveyard. My name is Paul. We got a pretty wild build today. Here we have a Hot Wheels pit crew car. Now this car came out in the early 70s and is one of the last of the red lines that were ever made. This car was not very popular and it's kind of on the rare side and I don't mean rare as it cost a lot of money. I mean rare is there are just not a lot of them around because people didn't really like them. But that's not a problem. We're still going to resurrect this beauty and we're going to bring it back to its original glory. So we'll get in there and we'll take it apart and we'll evaluate everything and see what we got. But this is going to be a fun build. So go ahead and grab your favorite adult beverage and sit back and enjoy. Now if this is the morning, grab a coffee, but then grab your adult beverage tonight and watch the video again. Give it a big thumbs up. Let's get started with today's build. I've already drilled out the post. Now there's two posts on this car. This body is in pretty rough shape. The back end of the car looks like there's some oxidation or something going on. We're going to take out this plastic piece in the back trunk area. Now when you open it up, it looks like there's some tools that fold out and open for you, I guess, since it's called a pit crew car. So we'll get that plastic piece out of there. Get my big old monster knockworst fingers in the way. Dang, that's stubborn. There we go. There you go. Look at all the little tools on there. It's kind of cool. But we'll get that cleaned up and put back in. Again, like I said, the whole back end of the car is all oxidized. The base isn't too bad, but it's pretty oxidized on the outside. We got to take that sticker off there. Here's the windshield and the interior. We got uh, another windshield and interior from another car too. I, I got a white interior that I'm thinking of using, but we'll see how it goes. This definitely needs to be sanded down and dipped in the Pledge Revive or the Gauzy. Let's get started. Here we're going to take the body and we're going to put it in the embalming fluid. We're not going to change the color of the car, but we definitely need to get all the paint off so we can see what kind of damage is on this car. I, I can see we probably get a lot of filing and sanding to go on this bad boy. Once you get it all coated, let the excess drip off and then put it on something so it can sit for a while and let that paint get eaten off by the stripper. Now that we got it cleaned up, I sanded it down and I filed it down some. We're going to coat it up with some Tamiya Surface Primer. Now, this Surface Primer is great stuff. Now, I had to put a couple of coats on there to help cover up that damage and fill in the cracks and crevices. Now, this is how it looked when it was done. What a huge transformation of this car already just with the primer. But that's pretty cool. That looks really nice. I'm happy with where we're going so far here. Now we're going to put the decals on. Now I do recommend that you clear coat the body before you put the decals on because it needs something to hold on to, a nice smooth surface. The primer is a rough surface, okay? And it will come off if you get air underneath it, like if you're trying to dry it or whatever like that, or if you're airbrushing to coat it with the clear coat to protect it. So something to think about there is make sure that you put the decals on a clear coat. And here's today's tip from your Uncle Polly. Let's go ahead and speed this process up.
the decals are just about totally put on here. We're going to let these set overnight and then we're going to touch them up with the Microsol and get them to bend around the corners of the roof and in the front end, etc. That definitely really helps them adhere. That's looking pretty cool. Nice, simple job. Let's go ahead and move on. Meanwhile, back in the graveyard. While the body is drying, let's attack the base. Now this really isn't in that bad a shape. We cleaned it up a little bit with a uh, wire brush. Now we're going to hit it with the flits. You hear me talk a lot about flits, but I'll tell you folks, this stuff is fantastic. It's a great product and it works extremely well. Now there's a lot of other products out on the market that may be a little bit cheaper than the flits, but I'll tell you what, you're not going to get a better a better return for your dollar than you can with this product because it can do multiple things. Not only can you polish metal with it, but you can polish aluminum, you can polish fiberglass, you can polish plastic. So by buying this product, you're, you're saving money by not having to buy all those other products, which like I said, you're saving money. So think about getting some flits. At the very end of the video, there is a spot for flits where you've got an opportunity to get the product for 20% off. So please check out that, that uh, little spot at the very end of the video when it comes up. Man, this thing is going to rock. Look at how nice that metal's polishing up. Man, that's going to look great. Just keep on polishing till you're happy with it. If you need a little bit more flits, put a little bit more on there. You may have to change out the bonnet. Go ahead and put a fresh bonnet on there. But man, this is going to look great. Absolutely fantastic. Let's go ahead and move on. Man, this turned out great. Look how shiny that is. Beautiful. We'll get that wiped down with a rag and get it cleaned up. Now, if you want to, you could put the Renaissance wax on there now also. So here's the body. We're going to go ahead and coat it with some beautiful clear coat from the Redline shop. Same thing here with the clear coat, folks. Put on a nice light tack coat. You just want to put that really light coat on and build up a few light coats, maybe three or four. And then once you're done, after you let it set for about 15 minutes, then come back in with the heavier coats. I want to try and get that back end open up. Reach underneath and use the little knob there. There you go. Look at that. But get a nice coat on everything. And like I said, then come back in and start hitting it with your wet coats or your saturation coats. This is going to be super sweet. That's looking good already and I don't even have all the coats on there. I try and get a good coat underneath too to uh, protect the underside and sometimes those decals go around and they form on the inside of the car or the underneath of the car. You want to coat that also. Make sure they're all sealed up. Now, if your decal is sticking up just a little bit, just push it down with your finger and then coat over it. Problem solved. I love this product from the Redline shop. This stuff is super shiny. And we're just about done here. Let's go ahead and move on. And this is how it turned out. Look at how shiny that is, folks. If you put it down properly, you will have a fantastic, beautiful looking car and paint job. Looking great. Here I've sanded down the windscreen. We're going to dip it in the Pledge Revive. Now I have Pledge Revive. I have Gauzy. They, they work fine. Gauzy is a little bit more expensive, but it's fantastic. Here, 
Once you dip it in the Pledge Revive or the Gauzy, go ahead and wick off the excess by touching the corner to a paper towel. Let it sit on that paper towel and then go ahead and take a cover and cover it up so the dust doesn't get to it. It should be dry in a few hours. Here's the shined up base. We still need to wipe that down with a cloth. We're going to replace the tires. Take a knife. These are cap style tires. Put them in the groove there and push it in and give it a twist. Sometimes it takes a little bit of effort to get in there. Almost. There we go. We'll get all four of these bad boys off. Nice. Some tires come off a lot easier than others, that's for sure. All right, we got four brand new meats from the Redline shop. We got two mediums for the front, and we got two larges for the rear. These ones here have the silver hubcap in the middle like all your Redline wheels do. Well, the Redline shop has developed a new product. Same tires, except the centerpieces are gold. And I got these tires on. I said, you know what? I'm going to put these gold ones on. Now, these are great. Look at them. Here's your difference between your gold and your silver. It's pretty much up to your imagination, folks, which ones you like. So I went ahead and went with the gold ones. Now, like I said, these are experimental. I'm not sure when and if the Redline shop is going to come out with these. But I asked John for these from the Redline shop, and he sent them to me. Now, if you want these tires, send an email to John at the Redline shop and say, Hey, I like those gold wheels. We need to have them. Now, I haven't seen them in the bearing style wheels. I'd like to see them there, too. Send John an email and tell him how much you'd like to have them and you saw them in the Diecast Graveyard video. Now here's all the parts. Here's the body all clear coated up. Man, that turned out beautiful. Now mind you, I only painted this car. There's the tool rack. That looks great. I only painted this car with the um, primer coat and then clear coated over it. Okay? Sometimes you don't need to get a whole bunch of paint jobs on there. Here's the base with those gold wheels. They look fantastic. I love them. Here's the interior, the white interior from a different car. And here's the glass. We polished that up and clear coated it. Let's put it all together, folks, and have our reveal. And here's what we started with. This Hot Wheels pit crew car. In incredibly rough shape. Once I saw this, I know and I knew that I had to restore this one here. Now, I'm kind of calling this a resto mod. I mean, the, the title says restoration, but this is a resto mod. We took it apart. We cleaned it up after we evaluated everything we had. We sanded it down. We polished it up. We didn't have to polish the body, though, because we went over it with an opaque paint. So you didn't have to wait. You just needed to smooth it down. The body or the base, we, we clean that up, we polish that up. We put brand new tires on there from the Redline shop, those beautiful gold wheels. Again, make sure you contact John and say, I want those gold wheels. The uh, glass, we clean it up and polish it up. We put those beautiful decals on there from Second Chance Redlines, and we put it all together. This was a very, very fun build. And here's the result. Look at how nice this turned out, folks. This would definitely be a proud member of anybody's collection, especially yours. Now, like I say in the past, folks, you can do this. You can do this. Just follow the tips and tricks that we give you on these videos. Get you some cars. Start out with some mainline cars, some Target or Walmart or Dollar General or whatever, and practice your painting, practice your cutting, practice putting on decals, and then later on come in and attempt these red lines, okay? Because once you drill out a post on a red line, you screw it up, it's awful hard to fix it. It can be done, but it's a pain in the backside, all right? 
but you guys can do this. Now I have an Amazon Marketplace page where I have a lot of the products that I use in my videos on that page. The link is in the description. Thank you for joining me today on Diecast Graveyard. We've got a lot more videos coming up in the future, so go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And thank you again for joining me here today. If there's something you'd like to see, put it in the comments. Thank you and cheers.